All right, let's get started on our belay knife restoration. Uh, the sheath is going to be replaced. This one is very old and brittle. See, it's breaking. We'll get to that later. Right now, we want to clean up this handle and get it sanded. we got to file off this right here. That is epoxy that has seeped out, I think. Now, to do this, we're going to use a couple of high-tech tools. Does that look like the end of a pool noodle? A piece cut off? That's what it is. Yeah, we're going to put that in the vise. That's just to protect the wood. Hold it still while... I think a file will cut that off of there. If it don't, we'll get the Dremel tool over here and do it that way. Okay, let's grab us a rasp. Let's grab us a rasp. There we go. Had to find one. Oh no, that's steel. I thought that was epoxy coming out of there. That's part of that rat tail tank coming out. I've never seen one like that. You're going to have to grind it off flat anyway. That will cut your hand open. So never mind the fancy thing I was going to try to do on the end there. Maybe it'll go in the handle. We'll see. Let me go clean this up on the grinder right quick. Hmm. That's curious. Alright, that is a brass cap on there. It actually is serving as a an anchor like a rivet almost but that's brass that will polish out on the buffer to try to take it off it's going to not hold the blade in said so i've seen a bunch of these knives i've never seen that okay now we're just going to mount it up in the vise over here and we wrap the blade up good and we're going to hand sand the handle and get it ready for some new finish All right, got the handle sanded down. See that polished out brass cap? Very, very pretty. It's not sharp now. So uh, it's supposed to be there, so we're going to leave it there. Sanded down very, very smooth. I did manage to save the, the original brand stamp. Little fish. Saved most of it. So, uh, all right, ready to put some finish on it. I'm going to use a clear lacquer. That right there, that will seal it, waterproof it, because fillet knives, what do you do when you use them? You cutting fish, you're around water, they get wet, and we don't want that water to soak into that wood. All right, so we'll do that. Okay, I found a couple of pieces of leather to get those JNL Skinners done anyway, and this scrap here I think is going to make the fillet knife a new sheath. Now these have a unique feature. I just remembered when I looked in there and saw it. I'm going to cut these threads. has a plastic slip fits down in there so the blade goes into that and holes that'll help it air flow through there and drain now I'm going to incorporate that into this 
first you take it out to the sink feel it's a little bit sandy you just wash it good with some soap and water let it dry right quick and we'll come back and get started on that sheet all right we interrupt the knife making sheet making and me and dude here is going to pick up some blueberries yeah tell everybody hey hi y'all hadn't seen butter bean in a long time mm -mm. let's look at, let's get a look at you <laughs> let's see there's one right there see that big purple one reach up there and grab it oh no not that one oh look right here see this color see that color there Ooh. and look around see the ones you can reach and i'll pick you some from up here okay okay Oh, that's the big one. Yeah, look right in there. Watch, yeah, him, watch that sticker one. bush. Can you reach that one? I think so. Okay. I'll need the whole bucket. All right. Okay, let's turn the camera off now. It's here, it's here, it's here. Leather. This late in the afternoon. That's okay. We're going to keep on working. All right. We got... I lost some of the sheath making. I forgot to turn the camera on. Let's take our attention back to the blade while that's drying. It has been oil dipped and ready to go. Did that handle come out pretty or what? Polished brass on the end there. Polish that brass up there. We'll wipe it down again. Now right in here we've got a little bit, just a little bit of surface rust. If you can see them letters on there, I don't want to lose those. So I'm going to be very careful. Put a little bit of oil on it, not much. Very light steel wool. And just rub it off just like that no buffing no grinding and the blade's still fairly sharp as the band-aid will indicate so I'm just going to touch it up with a uh, Arkansas stone here in just a little bit I'll show you that too One more little speck. There it goes. Get the spine. This side over here is fine. A bit of oil on it. Oh, looks good take our handy dandy shop rag and wipe it off hang on hope y'all can see this it is getting very very late in the day and I'm getting tired but I want to finish these three jobs alright somebody's honking the horn at me let me go see who that is alright let's sharpen this thing up Got the rust off of it. Looks very nice. Now I looked at this under a magnifying glass and obviously I don't think it has ever been sharpened. Uh, if it was at least it was done properly. Now right up here it's still quite sharp. That's where I cut my finger at. But uh, we're going to take this as a Arkansas stone. You can get them at most hardware stores oil stone and we'll put some oil on it and very slowly the 
feel a lot of resistance right there so there's a burr on one side or the other on this side I'm going to try to raise that burr on the other side and go until I don't feel any resistance okay that side feels good yeah I feel resistance here Keep going till we don't feel any. Now this method of sharpening has worked for hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay, no resistance. We'll turn it back over. You can probably hear it. You can get the fancy sharpening systems. Be careful, I don't badmouth anybody. But you can get that. I have one myself. And I've used it. And personally, I don't like it. I do it the old fashioned, traditional way. My grandfather taught me how to do this. When I was just a wee little lad. And my love affair with knives started when I was a little kid for some reason. I don't know why. Never thought I'd be a knife maker, but I've always had all kinds of knives. So. I think we're getting close here. Let's see. Yep, we're getting very, very close. Now, some people push it that way and that way, but that's fine. But I do it this way. That's the way I was taught. Some lessons will never, ever, ever leave your head. Nasty, sweaty, and dirty. Got on old short pants and old raggedy shirt, but I still got my shirt tucked in. That's uh, <laughs> that's another one of those lessons. I've talked about that before. Yeah, I think you should be there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, got my leather strop here. If anybody wants a leather strop this size, just bound on the 2 before or smaller, let me know. I've got a lot of scrap leather that would work fine for that. Minimal charge. Then wouldn't be a whole lot. All right, to finish it out, let us drop. We've got some red jeweler's roots or red compound. I'll put that on there and do the same thing. And what that'll do is take just a minute little bit of that uh that bird that raises up on there. That'll finish it off right there. And you can use just flat leather. That'll work too. You don't have to use compound. I'm still feeling some resistance there. That's the uh, that's the bird that's on there. camera won't get it but I can actually see a little bit of a 
black streak on there with that tiny bit of metals coming off. Forgive me, I know this is boring, but uh, there we go. Yes, sir. Now I'm not going to cut a piece of paper. My arms look awful, but uh, let's see. There you go. That with fillet of fish, right there. And a lot of times after you use this fillet, just a few fish. Keep in mind, it's a fillet knife. It's not a bone chopper. It's not a kindling firewood type knife. It's just to cut meat. And the owner of this knife knows that. And he's had this thing for, I think he said over 30 years, which would explain this. Because they don't, I don't think they put those they build them like that anymore but I don't know there we go that's good right there all right I think the sheath is dry by now let me go get it and uh and burnish the edges and we'll make sure I didn't even see if it fit we'll make sure it fits <laughs> I sure hope it does <laughs> be right back all right, the moment of truth. Here is the sheath, the replacement for that. Now my version, just a little bit longer. This one was sewn in the middle, mine sewn on the side. The plastic insert is in there, and I apologize for not showing you how I put that in there, but it's in there very, very tight. It won't come out. There is no welt from here down because of inserts in there. That'll stop the blade from cutting the threads. And there's a welt from here to here just to open it up a little bit to match the, pretty much match the shape of the blade to the handle. But uh, dipped it in hot oil and I put this high tech sheath tool in there to keep it open, form it out. It's part of a a uh, moose horn, part of a rack off a moose. Now, is it gonna fit? As the nature boy Ric Flair says, Woo! <laughs> I was honestly nervous. I'm gonna make sure it would fit. There we go. Now that is a stamp of a little, tiniest stamp I had of a large mouth bass. Cause this guy likes bass so much. So we'll put that on. What do y'all think? I think it came out great. Fits in there really tight. Pretty and sharp. Like I said, it's over 30 years old. It will last another 30 years or more than that. There we go. Now, I'm going to take a picture of it with my telephone. Because I got a picture of it before I started. So, uh, I'm going to try to put up a before and after type thing on the screen. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. But we'll see. There you go. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for your support. If you have a project like this, let me know. It might not cost as much as you think. Now, if you want one of these leather straps, big one, small one, medium, whatever, let me know. 
and I can hook you up. We need to use up a bunch of this scrap leather that I've got, so uh, it's not big enough for seeds or anything, so. But it works perfect for that. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, and I will see y'all in one or two days. <laughs>